What's up guys? Chris with Murphy Firearms Training. I want to talk to you today about something and I've got a couple of uh, example guns here. So I have a revolver, 38 Specials, uh, Smith & Wesson 642. It's unloaded. Let you see it. Okay. Got a Ruger Max 9. Ruger Max 9. You can look and see this gun is unloaded. And what I want to talk about is things that a lot of experienced shooters don't know, which is I want to talk about three things that I've found a lot of experienced, experienced shooters don't know, which is your three types of ammunition malfunctions. Now, pretty much everybody who shot 22 long rifle has experienced a misfire. A misfire, if I point this gun in a safe direction, pull the trigger, here's what happens, click. Nothing happens, okay? It's a dud, that's it. Um, we've all had that with a 22. Some of us have had it with a center fire. What happens is typically you got a bad primer. Every now and then, uh, a long time ago, I actually had a Taurus. The firing pin was about 2 thousandths too short. Had a lot of light primer strikes. Sent it back to Taurus, they fixed it. Uh, sold the gun anyway, but you know, that's what it is. So misfires. And that's one that I think most everybody knows about. The problem is there's two others. And up until a few years ago, I had never had either of the other two. And so, you know, it's kind of like you hear about them, but you don't really think about them until you've seen them happen. So um, the second one is a hang fire, and that is a perceptible delay after the gun has gone click before the ammunition actually discharges. So typically with a hang fire, you'd have something like this. You've got your gun in position, you squeeze your trigger, you get a click, you say, huh, I wonder what happened. And then, bang, okay? Um, was actually have had two hang fires happen on the range with me present. Thankfully, never to me. So, but I have seen two hang fires on the range now in the last probably five years. One was with a 22 long rifle. Uh, it was a youth shooting the gun. Click. Pulls his head up off the stock and says, excuse me, I had a bang, okay? 22 long rifle. The kid kept his shoulder into the stock, you know, kept it pointed down range, no big deal. The last one that I had was actually with a 12 gauge shotgun shooting clays. And again, uh, in our range safety briefing, we talk about misfires and hang fires. And we tell them it might be a hang fire. If the gun goes click, you have to hold it down range for 30 seconds. And so what happens? You know, the kid keeps his head on the stock, says, excuse me, I had a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, the gun, and it went boom. I mean, it was a long delay. I mean, probably like four seconds with a 12 gauge, which is just unbelievable, four or five seconds. And so, um, and, and the reason these are really dangerous is because I've seen a lot of experienced shooters. They'll take this revolver and they'll go click and it doesn't go bang and they just assume it's a misfire. And so here's what they do is they go click again. Now I wanna show you something guys. Okay, and, and there's nothing that way. Okay, there's nothing that way. There's no one behind the camera. It's just me, but I'm gonna point this at you, okay? And I want to show you something. So this Smith & Wesson rotates, for me, counterclockwise. Looks like clockwise for you guys, but counterclockwise, okay? Now let's say you have a hang fire. So you pull the trigger, it goes click, you pull the trigger again. Now that round you just fired is right here, okay? And I don't know how well you can see this on the camera, but there is not a clear exit for that bullet. If you have a hang fire and a revolver, and you pull the trigger again, and that hang fire rotates over a cylinder and then goes off, you just ruined your revolver, okay? So um, semi-autos, not quite the same, why? Because with a semi-auto, if this gun goes click, right? So click, you have to clear this chamber to load another round. Here's the danger with a semi-auto. You open it, it flings the round out and then the round goes off. Guys, I want you to think what happens during a cartridge being fired. You have an explosion, and it has nowhere to go except down the barrel. That's what makes ammunition work. 
If you have a hang fire and you just real quick throw that out somewhere, now that explosion is uncontained. And I don't think it'll kill you, but I bet it'd scare you to death. Not a good idea. And so unless you're in a life and death situation, and of course that's a different discussion, but if you're just standing at the range, punching holes in paper, and your gun goes click, you need to wait and make sure you don't have a hang fire because that's really, really scary. And I know that they're extremely rare, but if you have one and you don't handle it properly, it can be extremely dangerous, okay? So let me get to my third one. And this one I know from personal experience because I'm a reloader and I taught myself to reload. And I can tell you if I teach anybody to reload, they learn a lot of great lessons that I learned the hard way. Uh, my favorite reloading story is I reload to relax. And so I went out and I put on some music and I'm sitting there and I'm pulling the handle and I'm pulling the handle and I'm pulling the handle and I'm really enjoying myself and I'm watching what I'm doing. I've got my music going in the background and I'm reloading. And I'd been reloading for probably a year at this point and I'd made some good ammo and, and I'd made some bad ammo and I had learned a lot from my mistakes. I'd thrown away some cases. I had mangled some cases. Um, and, but I really felt like I had the hang of it, you know, and I'm reloading nine millimeter and uh, I look up and my powder hopper is dead empty, dead empty, dead empty. And I used to let my reloads just fall into this big bin and I would load two, three, 500 rounds at a time, just depending on what I felt like. And I would get up from the reloader, leave it all set up, sit back down, load some more, and I would just reload till the bin was full. The bin would hold like 500, nine millimeters a lot of times. And so, yeah, so I got this bin like 200, 259 millimeters. And I don't know when I ran out of powder, but I know somewhere in there, I've got some loads that ain't gonna work. So I took the whole bin, I dumped it into a 50 cal ammo can and I put a big piece of painter's tape across the 50 cal ammo can with one word, squib, okay? If you've never had a squib load, I had a bunch in that particular batch, uh, learned to carry a cleaning rod in my range bag, still carry a cleaning rod in my range bag. Uh, I have had one squib load with factory ammunition in my lifetime, one. And they're much more common with reloads uh, and it is typically poor reloading practices, but they can happen. So here's what happens with a squib load. You generate just enough pressure to push the bullet out of the case and technically, if the egg, egg, bullet exits the barrel, technically, if the bullet exits the barrel, it is still considered a squib load. It's a lower than normal pressure round. But when squib loads are dangerous or not when they exit the barrel, it's when they don't exit the barrel. And so what happens on a revolver, you pull the trigger, right? The bullet stops somewhere in the bore. You think it's a misfire, and so what do you do? you pull the trigger again. When that second bullet hits that first bullet, bad things happen. With a semi-automatic, we like to be tactical. We like to think of self-defense scenarios. What do we do? Click the old tap rack assess, right? Tap your magazine, rack your slide, pull the trigger again. Well, if there's a bullet part way down your bore, you load a second one, pull the trigger, bad things happen. You end up with a pile of junk in your hands, might end up missing a few fingers. Um, they're even more dangerous when we get to high pressure rifle cartridges. Okay, so, um, you know, my advice is if, if, if the gun goes off, if the gun does not go off, um, if it sounds funny, if it, if it just seems off, clear it, check your bore. Okay, you get a click, you're not 100% certain it's a misfire, wait, okay. Um, be safe out there. Uh, I mean, these things are exceedingly rare and because they're exceedingly rare, sometimes we don't think about them. Uh, and especially if you're taking a new shooter out, uh, you, you want to ingrain in them good habits. So if the gun goes click, make them hold it out there in a good shooting stance for a while. The NRA recommends 30 seconds. You make your own decisions, but keep it out in a good shooting stance and then pull it out. If you get a full cartridge with a nice dent in the primer, it's a misfire. If you get a cartridge case with a dent in the primer 
and there's no bullet, you better check your bore because there's a chance that that bullet is in your bore. Now, I've actually been shooting steel and had a squib. I'm going to show you that video. I heard the bullet hit the steel, but it was less than normal recoil. It didn't cycle the action. I knew it was wrong. Clear the gun, check the bore. I wanted to do a little shooting with this thing and just kind of show you, you know, it running through its paces. So here we go. That didn't sound good. Let's clear our firearm. That didn't sound good. Get my handy dandy zip tie here. All right, we're clear. That sounded like a squib load. If you don't know what a squib load is, that's when you don't get enough powder in the char in the uh, casing and the bullet gets stuck in the bore. So you have to be aware of those when you hand load. Uh, not an issue. I mean, it runs well, um, other than, like I said, if I have a crappy hand load. So check that out and see what you think. Guys, I appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know other videos you want to see, and we'll see you around.